Hey, hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to Morning Talks with Bro. Gosh, I feel like I needed to do my incantation before I got on here. Yes! Woo! I just did my, what I call a power move. Uh, when I don't necessarily have the time to do my incantation, I have learned to, when I say my incantation, I do it in a peak state, meaning very high energy, right? As high of an energy as I can muster. So if we're on a scale of one to 10, I wanna do my peak state or say my peak state uh, from a space of eight to 10. And so when I say certain aspects of my incantation, I'll do a power move with it so that I have association. So sometimes if I don't have the time to do my incantation on the spot, I'll do my power move and it's to induce the feeling that saying my incantation would induce or would cause. Hey everybody, how you doing? What up? <laughs> I jumped right out my face talking about stuff, uh, you know, tools that I use to put myself in a peak state or a state of being to manage my emotional state. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Morning Talks with Ro. Hey, Linnell. Hey, Tanya. Hey, Shirley. <sighs> what up, y'all? So I was, uh, you got your morning drink? I was turning over, hey Jay, I was turning over in my mind, you know, what would I like to talk about today or what do we want to talk about today? And uh, yet again, I'm coming with an open space to uh, see what wants to come up and out. What's, what is calling us to either heal, transform, let go, forgive, get greater perspective on, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Personally and in the outer world. So what do you guys want to talk about? Let's, let's get it in. I am uh, claiming to speak from a space of authenticity and transparency and to be used as a vessel for love and peace and power and guidance and good and honesty. What up, y'all? Hey, Trenton. Bless up. <laughs> Bless up. So um, I am in Chicago, Illinois. I'm at the Korea. I'm at home. It's good to be Sorry, home. I'm not sure. Look, see, I don't do the Alexa thing. My mom does this Alexa thing. I'm like, they are listening to everything, okay? <laughs> what? I wasn't talking to you. So um, I am here. I'm getting ready to celebrate my, my girl's wedding this weekend. Tanya, she's in the chat, or she just was in the chat. What up, T? Congratulations on being just a few days away from becoming a Mrs. Turner. That's so exciting. Um, but I am leaving the floor open for you all to talk about what's real. LaShonda says drinking ice cold green, green tea, I take it, with a dab of Olive Garden raspberry peach Bellini syrup. Hey, now, go on ahead and make it do what it do. <laughs> LaShonda says she got her morning drink on deck. Ah, so what's going on, everybody? What's the topic of today? What are we turning over for ourselves? What kind of healing uh, do we need to get? What kind of perspective do we want to muster up? Do, what kind of um, connection um, do we want to have with each other today that quite possibly might take our living to the next level or just how we're, you know, how we're functioning in the world? to the next level. Brian says, how was reuniting with In Vogue? And Shamika says, okay, uh, it was great. I mean, you know, I think it's, um, I think it's beautiful that people were able to let whatever, you know, things could have been keeping that from happening to come together and do something really beautiful like that. You know, who knows what the, the future may hold, if it's that, just that, or whatever it could be, but I think it's a beautiful thing. You say Linnell has a great topic. Linnell, what you talking about? You hiding? <laughs> you hiding today? How's everybody doing? Put in the um, in the chat with an emoji. How you feeling? I know we're gonna talk about something good. We're just getting our engines warmed up. What? I know somebody was recently wanting me to talk about something. Almost be like a moderator to talk about the um, increased sense of racism 
But that's such a heavy topic and I'm not sure you guys want to dive into that. But if we want to have an honest conversation with each other so that we can actually garner some healing from it, uh, we can we can go for it. Okay, LaShonda says, oh my gosh, I just, whoa, whoa, y'all are talking. I love it. Said, I just customized my echo. Alessa is listening to you and asked me if I wanted to play a song by Chicago. Hello, man. Uh, oh, send a love back to you, Brian. Shalay says, I'm grateful that everybody seems to be in great spirits. Bless up, don't they? How about that? Linnell says, I have to have a difficult discussion with my business partner. Oh, you want to put it on the table, darling? Mm. Uh, Denise says, she's sleepy. Okay, I hear you, darling. Michael says, I would love to see you all on the regular. Bless up. Hey, Perrin. You have a, a, a an what is that? Not so happy looking face or kind of like a indifferent face. You want to stretch and what that could mean? Linnell, do you want to put that on the table today and get some, see if we can get some insight for you and it may bless uh, other people in the chat? Hey, hugs to you and Ron. Lay it out, okay? Let's get it. I mean, I don't know if you want to put it out there, but we can and we can see if we can... Uh, be diplomatic in our approach. She isn't doing her part. I'm running the company on my own and it's weighing on me. Mm, I'm so, okay. Mm, I'm sorry. I know that that can be very difficult because I know that you love her and care about her a lot and you want your friend to thrive um, and to win, right? Um, however, if it is delaying or dragging or being a pulley that's pulling back the progress instead of a push forward. Are you willing to have a difficult conversation? I guess that's where it starts. Who in here needs to have a difficult conversation with somebody? I think that when we have difficult conversations, think about, it could be a few things. One, I'll take you back to a tool that I shared with you guys long ago uh, when I would teach more often, and that's to come in with intention, very clear intention. So I like to do things in threes, for example. So I may say, I need to go have this difficult conversation and I am going to go in with the intention to understand, the intention to have compassion, be compassionate, and the intention to listen. So that means that you're not going to do a lot of the talking, right? You're going to actually listen to the other person's perspective and you're trying to glean understanding. You're trying to say, if I were in their shoes, let me see why they feel the way they feel so I can possibly find the win-win situation in this. I don't need to be right I just want to understand and find the best case scenario for both involved. That could be a great intention to walk into a difficult situation with. You may have a spouse, right? And they're not doing their part in the relationship and you are pissed. You are fed up. You about ready to leave, right? Um, but because you believe in partnership and because you believe in your vows and because you don't want to leave your partner, but it's making it so hard not to do it. You say, okay, I'm going to choose some intentions. Let me pick three that are, that are going to drive my behavior, that are going to drive what I say. They're going to drive how I think about this, right? So you say, maybe I intend to be loving. I intend to be accommodating because some of us may come in accusing, Ugh, pointing the finger, pointing the finger. And, and that's not going to help, right? But if you choose to be accommodating, you may say, okay, accommodating might involve listening. It may involve uh, trying to understand somebody else's point of view. It may involve, um, you know, allowing somebody else to speak when normally you would cut them off. And you may also say that I'm going, I intend to be um, honest. Some of us are afraid of being honest, but honesty is what's exactly going to get you to real healing. And it's what's going to get you to real understanding. And it's going to get you to real forgiveness if forgiveness is necessary. Let's see what you guys are saying before I move forward. Okay, it's been raining hard all morning, noon. Really, Denise, okay. Hey, Cuzzo, how are you? Teresa, 99. Grateful for your sobriety. Bless up, Trenton. Good for you. 
LaShonda says, I'm be, uh, becoming a declutter queen and feeling so good about the uh, 10,000 containers and 999,000 whatever tops I just got rid of, I'm free. Honey, don't I know that so much energy can be packed into things. And we don't realize that by keeping these things, depending on the energy that they were given to you in or the person that gave them to you or the memories that are attached to them, you have a lot of background noise in your spirit, in your mind, in your emotional self. And just by letting it go, you lift weights. You might lose weight. Hello, that happened to one of my clients. One of my, uh, yeah, one of my clients. She let some stuff go and she lost weight. That's how interconnected things can be. Okay. Linnell says, I keep getting the same response uh, from the universe. The conversation has to happen. Absolutely. I'm not sure what the result will be, but my dreams have to take priority. Bless up. You know, don't worry about the results maybe because then we're getting in the way of what God can do. You know, it's, it speaks to surrender. Um, being willing to have the difficult conversation it can start the journey to understanding and healing and forgiveness if that's necessary. And it also leaves room if you say, I give this to you, let your will be done, or I give this to the universe. Um, you know, what is the best case scenario for this situation? Um, you know, what would be, what's the next best step I can take in this situation? And then let it lead. You know, if you're so clear on what the results should be, you're already in the way of something greater than you or an intelligence greater than you being able to step in and guide the situation, guide what you need to say next, guide what you need to do next, what will be in your best interest, you know? We've had the same conversation before with no change behavior, huge, huge. A lot of us go back to situations and we don't see changed behavior and then we get upset. How many of us in the chat right now have accepted somebody back into our lives or accepted a situation back into our lives and we did not require changed behavior before we let it back in. Mm -mm. I got a hole in my mouth, right? We didn't require changed behavior before we let the person or the situation back in and then you're getting frustrated again. So sometimes we got to do what's hard. We may have to say, no, you, you can't come back. I love you so much. Or I really like this thing, but it's still not right. And I have to have some boundaries. I have to um, have uh, enough um, self-honor to say, no, I need to see real change, atonement, before I allow this back in so that I don't keep injuring myself. I don't keep impeding the progress of this situation. I don't keep slowing down what's possible for me because I'm letting something else drag behind me that's not doing its part. see. Uh, Teresa says, how do you let go of those that you love, but they don't show it in return? Would you forgive someone that has never apologized to you for things they have done to you and act as though, oh my gosh, I'm getting a chill. Nothing has happened. This one, this one's, this one's so good because I just got through watching a sermon from, uh, pastor, uh, Dr. John Wesley. I love this guy's sermon. I think his church is out of uh, Virginia. And what I love about him is he's got a PhD in theology, but he, 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 he does an excellent job, in my humble opinion, of being able to grapple with what's real and bring it into the perspective of Christianity. And I don't, I'm not saying that you got to be a Christian to understand this. It's just that he happens to be Christian. I glean growth from many places, just so you know. Okay. So what I love is that he'll take something as, as sensitive as the Amber Geiger case with the Botham John thing and, and people having issues with forgiveness in that trial and grapple with it right in front of you, with your faith right in front of you, because it's hard. We're not going to act like this isn't hard. What you saw, some people felt very differently about that display of forgiveness, right? So I just saw that today. So I wonder, I wonder, God, what will bubble up in me to share about forgiveness because that was just put on my heart. Um, forgiveness is not necessarily for the other people. Forgiveness is for you to be free. If we carry, if we carry, my goodness, and I've had to do this in my own life. This is not me just speaking from some type of rhetoric. This is the rhetoric is supporting what I'm going to say, but I've already exercised this in my life. 
where I had to forgive some people that I felt did not handle me in a way that was respectful, that spoke to what I had offered the situation, that spoke to how I protected it. They didn't protect me back the same way. I'm like, yo, really? <laughs> but it wasn't about them. I think, I think the first step is to deal with the, 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 with your actual emotions about something. Some of us feel like you, you, when it happens, if I ain't forgiven, all of a sudden I'm not right. No, deal with your anger. You don't want anger to drive your behavior. You don't want anger to drive what you say, I would think, you know, but deal with your real emotion about it first. You know what I'm saying? Like deal with that. It wasn't, if it wasn't cool to you, cry about it. If it wasn't cool to you, deal with that. But then we don't want anger to continue to drive the behavior. Because then it becomes toxic to you and then the situation and you really don't get to move forward from it. So once you once you deal with the emotion about it, I think it is sometimes in order for us. And this was something that he was suggesting. And I agree with it because it's the way that I've handled things. It, it doesn't have to be confrontational when we tell somebody that what you did, I didn't like. What you did, if, if they're still living, if they're still, you know, touchable, you know, reachable. I don't appreciate what you did, but I'm glad that you've moved into a space. Well, I'm glad that I've moved into a space to be able to make it okay that what you did is what you did because it's beyond me. I'm going to give this to something greater than myself, an intelligence greater than myself to work on you, your heart, and your intentions because I don't have nothing to do with that. And if I stay angry at you, it's only hurting me. So I, I choose to let go because it, it frees me. It frees me because think about it. If we operate from hurt and anger, it keeps us in a space. But if we give it to something greater and say, I surrender. Matter of fact, I pray for you to, to, to work on whatever is happening in your heart space so that you get better. Then we get to release and give it away. Let it vaporize and then see what happens. Because I find that when we take our hands off of something, when we take our tight grip off of something, when we say, oh, then that intelligence that's greater than us, that, that has the capacity to think about something in a, in a more expanded perspective than we can because we're so subjective, we're so hurt, we were so angry, we have such a point of view about it, it can take it and say, okay, now you're not thinking about it, you're not trying to manipulate the situation, now let me plant a new seed. And we'll get it out of thin air almost sometimes. It'll be like, oh, that's a way to think about it. Oh, that just stretched what I, how I could feel about it. It gives it new meaning. And then I want you guys to also trust that it is still working for your good. Do you know that the thing that I felt I wanted forgiveness of, uh, that I had to forgive before I got an apology, never got an apology, still worked for my good, but it was years later. But I had to do the hard work of letting go and forgiving. And then you know when you've forgiven, when you can even pray for the other person or just say, even if you get neutralized, enough, if you get neutral about it, that's a blessing. Because now you're not angry, you're not hurt, you ain't necessarily celebrating stuff either, but at least you're neutral about it. It is what it is. God bless them. Let them, you know, I hope that whatever is happening with them, that they get healed. And then when they do and they atone, let them bless somebody else. Be blessed so you can bless other people. Then you know you really let go. So forgiveness is a lot about freeing ourselves and keeping your heart light. Not letting you walk around with heavy stuff. I know I'm talking a lot, you guys. Because it only hurts us. And by us keeping our energy light, if you believe in law of attraction, if you believe in just energy and aligning yourself with certain energy. If I align myself with more peace, I can bring in more peaceful situations. If I align myself with more joy, then I can bring in more things to be joyful about. If I align myself with just better gratitude, more a better vibration, gratitude, then I'm going to find possibly other things to be grateful for. And that's going to change how I see life, what I'm experiencing in life, what I attract or bring into my life, the people that see me because my energy is light. I'm going to bring in different experiences. So this is for us. And eventually, I, 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 I bet that thing will show up differently and you're going to get greater perspective. But only God, the universe, that which you believe is more intelligent than yourself can bring that to you at the perfect time. And trust that. I hope that helped. Candace McLennell, is your partner going through something that is making her not be 110%? Great question, Candace. 
I honestly don't know. That'll be part of the conversation. Very good question. Chantiel says, two days in a row. I'm blessed to hear your voice. Bless up, queen. Bless up, honey. So good to see you, Chantiel. Love you. Uh, dropping mental jewels. Gems. Hey, Shalay. I know I'm behind you guys. I'm catching up. Uh, what book is everyone reading? Ro, I found notes from a friend by Tony Robbins at the thrift shop for $1. Bless up. It's so good. Then I lost it. Went home and discovered I had bought another copy for 50 cents. I love it. Uh, it's so good. Da, 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 da. God wanted me to finish it. That's right. Come on, take these signs. Peace, Shanika. Um, Candace said, I had to have that difficult conversation with myself. I had to realize that nobody is stopping me from being better than me. Mm. And I also had to depart from friendships that was toxic. You know, that takes me back to leaving a, a porch light on. Some people, I feel like we do throw each other away very quickly. And we don't give ourselves or other people opportunities to atone, opportunities to change. You know, um, it doesn't mean that you got to keep them close to your vest, right? You may, may be too toxic for that, but I at least want to leave you room to grow. Because there's a possibility that just my open space to believe that you can grow will provide the space, will, will be the gap that you need for somebody to believe in you to come into this greater version of yourself. And that's hard. That's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. And sometimes, ooh, ooh, something else he said that I thought was very powerful. Forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation. They are not synonymous. Just because you forgive somebody, you let go of what they did, the offense that they did, doesn't mean that you've got to reconcile with them. They got to be your friends. You got to be chummy. Maybe it doesn't work like that. But you just want to release the bitterness. You want to release the negative or low vibrational energy because it only hampers your ability to create or receive from a better space of being. It, it, it heavies your heart. We want to lighten the load. You want to show up as the light that you are. You want to desmudge your glass. You know, if we're all walking around with us, uh, like a glass or something, the dirtier the glass, maybe that's the, the stuff that you've been through. You want to keep working on that. So you lighten the load. So you let the light in through the glass. You keep cleaning it off. More light gets to come in. Keep cleaning it off. More light gets to come in. Keep cleaning it off. More light gets to come in. And watch the things transform around you. Okay. Uh. I haven't mastered this yet. How did you do it? Here's my pastor. I love him. He's my, oh, yes, yes, yes. I love it. Uh, what can come out of this situation as a blessing? It's something good hidden in why this is happening. Try to look at it from the outside to see what you, what it is that you're missing. I love it. Come on, P, come on, y'all. I'm about to call y'all PPU. Come on, morning toss with Roe family. Denise says, if you carry hate and grudge, it weighs you down. You'd be miserable and stressed. I'm telling you, and the only person that's hurting is you. The only person's creations that are suffering are yours. The more that we can get comfortable letting some, some issue vaporize in front of us, because we say, I give it to you. That intelligence that made me, that intelligence that made everything that's coexisting, it has consciousness all up in it, meaning everything that could be thought is here. Let me go to it and say, what could be the next best step? What could be the next best thing to think? What could be the next best thing to do? And then let that issue or person that you have the issue with, just let it vaporize in front of you and say, I give it to you because me worrying about it ain't fixing it anyway. Me harping on it and turning it over and over and over again ain't, ain't going to fix it anyway. All right? Let's see. Uh, this just happened to me, Candace says, uh, with my best friend who made me feel like a bad friend because I was looking out for her well-being. I mean, we went through it, but now she acts like everything is good. Sometimes we got to let people go until uh, something writes itself within them. It may not have anything to do with us, and most things don't. Usually it may be just how we're seeing something, how we're responding to something, giving something new meaning. All of this stuff you have the power to do within yourself. How powerful. We really don't have to have anyone or anything change outside of ourselves if we take the initiative to um, exercise our power of choice. The power to choose what you're going to allow something to mean to you. The power to choose how you're going to respond or react to a situation. It's practice. And a lot of us have never practiced it. All right. 
Let's see what you're saying. Linnell says, I used to think of uh, think forgiveness was about me allowing the other person to win or affirming their negative behavior. Once I realized it's about me and not about them, forgiveness became quite easy. Bless up. It's more of a hurt, not anger. Bless up. Either way, both of my kind of low vibrational in energies in the sense that they have you feeling low and or heavy. And we want to release it. We want to make it okay. Because usually you've heard this statement possibly hurt people, hurt people. Still don't have nothing to do with you. That's something in them. So God bless them. Sorry. And lift whatever burden they could be dealing with that's making them respond to life in the way that they are and hurt other people in the in the wake of them. What's coming behind them? They just leaving destruction. Pow, pow. Bam, boom. Hurting people. What's in them that's causing them to do that? And that had nothing to do with you. Hopefully that makes you feel better. Everybody highly recommend the book, The Four Agreements. Powerful stuff, life changing. Practice those four agreements, life changes. Let's see. Um, Tanya says, I just missed everything. Too many phone calls, and mom keeps asking me questions. I'm going to have to rewatch. Yes, you do, girl. This is a good one. It's all, they're all good. Linnell says, oh, we start with one cabinet, one junk drawer, one bathroom counter. When you see what you accomplish, you will be energized. I did 16 cabinets in a week. Oh, my goodness. You guys are talking about decluttering. Bless up. Hi, Monique. Candid says, I learned to let go because I don't need stress in my life when I want to free my soul and be happy. Bless up. We get to choose. On a different note, can I get one of those shirts? Ha <laughs> ha! Can you see what it says? Let me see, because I, I, I got chat stuff there. It says, I'm not conceited. I just know my self-worth. Hello. Hello. Okay. Let's see. Um... Once you let go, there are so many opportunities that will come in, right? Because you're lighter. You're not carrying that with you. And what we don't realize is that if we carry it too much, then it can seep into other relationships. It can seep into how you see other people in situations that may not even deserve you to look at, that, look at it that way. It can warp your perspective about life because you're carrying that with you. It can change how you show up in a moment. You don't come in as light or as free or as jovial or as brand new. You don't allow yourself to show up fresh. You're carrying, you, you're a bag lady. You're a bag man. Woo. It's not to say you don't learn from it, but we don't want to carry it so that it impedes on who we, showing up as our best selves. So that it impedes on the, the, the ability to shine your light to the degree that, of which you can, you know. It's practice. Deep words spoken as usual. Hey, Brad, LaShonda, uh, Linnell Everett, and everything goes okay. You guys still talking about that? Hey, Beverly, on my way to the gym, but I'm listening. Bless up, Beverly. Forgiveness, girl, we've been going on. Sammy says, I'm actively working on reprogramming my mind to be in tune with what I truly desire. Bless up. Positive thoughts and feelings. Recently, it seemed like many things in my world have been breaking or falling apart. Mm. I am now seeing this as the powers that be are clearing out the old to make room for the new and better things that I'm now ready to receive. I'm continuing to be patient, hopeful, and ready, good, to take action when needed and when I'm led to. Bless. I love it. You know, I've started to look at when we deal with things that challenge us and that hurt us emotionally, it's like course correction. It's course correction. And especially for those of us who may believe in a destiny, right? Like some people are like, well, you get to choose how's their destiny. And I grapple with this destiny thing. Cause I'm like, if, ch if choices define our destiny, you know, how is there really a destiny? If, if God, the universe, however you decide to speak about this source of intelligence sent us down here with free will, is there really a destiny? But let's explore that possibly there is a destiny, right? Um, and, and maybe there are choices because you have free will that can put you on course to get there quicker or take you off. And then as you hit those challenges and those hurtful spaces, it's just trying to course correct you. Right? It's just trying to course correct you back to a space of hopefully happiness or, or um, contentment in your life. Mm, that's a good that's a good conversation. Teresa says, I'm learning to let go. However, it's hard when it's someone that's as close as family. It surely is. 
because you love them on a whole other level. It's so deep. It is so deep. And, 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 and that's a lot of the times the closest that we get to unconditional love. Where we experience, you know, I'm going to love you in spite of what you said. I'm going to love you in spite of what you do. I don't like, but I think that, that part of being able to forgive wholeheartedly is being honest and being willing to have difficult conversations. Not just saying, oh, I got to forgive them and they don't know the offense or they don't know what happened. I think it's important for you to express. You don't have to do it from a confrontational space. You can be honest and still speak from a space of love, meaning I'm in a state of allowance. I'm allowing you to be who you are. I'm allowing myself to be who I am. I'm allowing this to be what it is and I'm allowing myself to speak on it. I'm choosing to let it go. I'm choosing to forgive you because I love you, but I don't like what you did. And maybe just by being honest and, and willing to have that difficult conversation and then let it go because, hey, I can't do nothing with your heart space. That's your work. But I got to let this go for me. But I also want to let you know, I love you, but I don't like what you did. I love you, but I don't like how you're operating. I love you, but I feel like I got to keep you at a distance because you feel toxic. Maybe that in itself is going to lift a burden and it's going to allow you to truly let go. And it's also going to open their eyes to the destruction possibly that they're creating that maybe they're not aware of. And if they don't choose to change, who's that on? Them. That's their own personal walk and growth you have nothing to do with. And hopefully by knowing that and saying, I surrender this situation, I let it go, I take my hands off the steering wheel, you do it, God, then you can really let it go. You've honored yourself by speaking on your truth. You've let somebody know what time it is. You've done it in, in a way that, that you uh, feel maybe is the most non-confrontational so that you don't pick up more energy that doesn't serve you. And then you let it go and say, work on that. And I pray that they, they grow in whatever way they need to grow so that they don't continue to hurt me and others on their path. Let's see. Um, Linnell says, LaShawn, I might be a hoarder of, <laughs> y'all are going in. Uh, ooh, we ro Rohians <laughs> helping each other. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Michael, four agreements truly helped. Four agreements is bomb, baby. Hey, Anita. Uh, Beverly says, I forgave a murderer. Mm -hmm. Come on, Beverly, speak on it, babe. Took me three years. She killed her own child. That was my foster baby. I received a gift from heaven, uh, spontaneous healing through music. Speak on it, Beverly. LaShonda says, grab some bags or old purses you don't use. Put together. Okay, girl, you going in. I love it. Love the four agreements, Shirley says. Shanika says, don't make assumptions was big for me. Yes. Come on. You need a medium. Uh, Nancy says, I miss the meat and potatoes of the message. No, we always kicking meat and potatoes around, baby. Sometimes work slash job just gets in the way of de uh, definitely will rewatch. Please do. It's a blessing. Uh, Peak says, excellent. Hey, Pete. Why you already know what to do? <laughs> uh, let's see. Charles says, 100, you can only change yourself. Bless up. Off topic. Be <laughs> That's not for me to do, Mike. Linnell says, uh, okay. So I think we have had a beautiful conversation today about forgiveness, about learning how and why letting things go can be so beneficial and how it helps your heart space and how it lightens the load in your life, period. We've also learned about how it's not us, it's somebody else's work to do. And learning to surrender that, learning to let that situation vaporize in front of you because you have given it to an intelligence greater than yourself to work on how powerful that is. Trusting that you're going to get the answer at the perfect time in the perfect way. Maybe not when you think you need to get it or you're supposed to get it, but when you need to get it, it's going to give it to you. But you got to work on just releasing dealing, possibly having difficult conversations, but from a space of love or from a space of self honor doesn't have to be confrontational. I mean, this is some good stuff, yeah? Nancy says, I um, I tired of having to have a conversation with my brother when all he wants to do is argue. I love him, but from a distance. Bless up. He's more toxic than beneficial. Come on, speak to my life at this time. Sucks that mom can't respect how I feel. So, like we said, 
we just keep doing the work on ourselves. We can't control anybody else. We can't control how they respond to life, but we can control how we respond. We can control our perspective and what we choose to allow something to mean to us. We can control what we say. We can exercise self-control. And that's the beauty. That's the struggle, the beautiful struggle that brings you into a greater version of yourself. I can't tell you that it's worth it, but it is. I, I beautifully struggle a lot. But it's worth it. I keep my heart lighter. I keep my glass de-smudged more often. And that only helps me to show up as a greater version of myself on a more regular basis. I don't want something or someone else trying to dictating how I show up in life. And if it's starting to do that, I know I need to go into my quiet place and get, get that work in. This ain't easy, but it's worth it. Your quality of life is at hand. Your quality of thinking is at hand. Your quality of being is at hand. Your quality of doing is at hand. We get to choose. God bless them for what, whatever perspective or behavior they're doing. Keep them at a distance if they need to be at a distance. Love them from a distance. You're too toxic to be in my space. You're too toxic to be up under my vest. I can't keep you right here no more. But what I do pray and hope is that whatever healing they need to do, and you don't got to tell them because you so whatever. No, pray for them in a quiet place and truly, truly come from that sincere space of love. Come from a sincere space. And if love sounds too lofty, because sometimes love can sound too flower and trees, just come from a space, space of allowance. Okay, I'm allowing them to be who they are right now. I don't agree with it, but I'm allowing it. And sometimes you only want to say, have to say, I don't agree with it because you want to take as much judgment off of the situation as possible so you can lighten your load. Not easy, but worth it. But if the first step is to say, I'm allowing you to be who you are. I'm allowing you to show up the way you're showing up. I don't agree with it, but I'm allowing that to be. It is what it is. That's a great first step to me. And then the next step could be, okay, now I don't even choose to judge their behavior. God, take that. Universe, take that. Do with it what you will. Let your will be done. I'm just going to keep doing the best I can with me, releasing that because I can't control nobody else. And it's a waste of energy. Let me refocus that into something else that's more profitable, more, more, more beneficial. And then let the universe, let God work on that. And then see what shows up and trust that whatever needs to happen with that is going to happen. You just keep your, you just keep desmudging your glass. You just keep being willing to give it new meaning. That's going to help you feel more empowered, more light. That's going to release the burdens off of your heart. Forgive, but you see how many layers there are to forgiveness. And it don't have to happen overnight. You're not some bad person. Maybe the first step is just to deal with your emotions about it, but not to spew negativity about it to everybody else. <clears throat> to take it into your space. Maybe just a one or two confidants that you know can be uh, uh, um, as neutralized as possible to help you grapple with it, the beautiful struggle. And then find a way to have the difficult conversations if they need to happen. And then truly release it because it's beyond your scope of awareness at this point to know what's the next best thing to do. Release it to something greater. And then expect at some point that you're going to get the answer. And it may not be what you anticipate it's going to be. Get out of the way of the result. Woo! All right, what y'all saying? How, uh, do you get your Zeta shot? <laughs> Hi, Martel. <laughs> um, leave people where they are. Every cart does not need to be on the same train. Well, love them from over there. <laughs> Any points? Hello. <laughs> Great talk. Yes, Shanika. Uh, Christine, hey, Miss Rona, great talk, needed it, bless her. Say hello to Mother Ben, and I surely will. Sending love from her favorite adopted daughter. Shout out to Diva, too. Um, love you, Coach. Love you back, Shirley. Glad you enjoyed the talk. I'm glad you enjoyed this talk today. You guys, it's very powerful. <sighs> love it. Okay, I'm sending love to everybody. I hope uh, you got much from our connection today. And I will see you the next time for Morning Talks with Ro. All right? Bye.